everybody, welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. Uh, Jacob's still away. Uh, um, update on him, he's doing well. Uh, I saw him last week, for those of you who saw the post on social media. It's going to be a little while longer, but doing very well. Um, but so, he'll be back. I don't, uh, we we had, he and I talked about maybe doing a couple Zoom pods, but I, I'm not sure he wants to do that quite yet. So, just me and you here for a little while. Um, I do want to say real quick before we get into this podcast that man something happened over the weekend that i saw some people were mad at and i just want to stick up for my dude not that i know him at all and not that we've ever met or he knows who the fuck we are but uh, jason kelsey this weekend He's an ex-football player, and for some, some of you might know him as the brother of Taylor Swift's boyfriend. He was at Penn State this weekend. I think he was uh, maybe announcing the game, or he was doing something there at the game. And some dude, he, he, look, man, these guys, they get followed with people in their phones in their face, and, you know, just trying to make a video, or they're trying to get a selfie, or some people are trying to be trolls, Right? And uh, one dude was following him and basically said to him, I can't believe, uh, he basically said to him, uh, hey, how does it feel that your brother Travis is a F word, I guess is what we're saying, for dating Taylor Swift? And, um, you know, that was his breaking point. But he basically said, called him a, an F word and Jason took the phone out of his hand and smashed it and said, who's the F word now? Now, some people are getting on Jason for saying that. I think we're missing the point. First of all, guys, guess what? And now this kid is like mad or upset that he got his phone smashed and how dare he. Before I get into everything else, I want to say something real quick. You don't get to be an asshole and then all of a sudden be a victim. You don't get to be an asshole and then be a victim. That's not how things work. I, I believe I heard uh, my buddy Cody Decker talking about this today. You don't get to be an asshole and then all of a sudden cry victim. That's not how we get. Listen, man. I'm going to tell you something real quick, okay? You know when I learned that I couldn't talk shit anymore? Is when somebody punched me in the face. Hard. Three times. Knocked me out. Maybe kicked me a couple times in the ribs. Do you know what that taught me? Oh, shit. You know what I can't do anymore? That. Yo, I, I've always said this. Everybody should be punched in the face hard one time. Everybody should be punched in the face hard one time to be like, oh shit, I can't say that stuff to somebody else. I might get punched in the fucking face. You can tell two things. People who have never been punched in the face or people who you know you probably shouldn't punch in the face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't get to be an asshole and then walk away like you somehow didn't deserve it. You're so lucky that dude did not punch a hole in your chest and shit in it. 1,000% justified. You know what it's like? It's like this Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, and for those of you listening who don't know, that's a basketball team. They have a columnist who wrote an article about this dude, Joel Embiid, who hasn't played all year. And basically in the article, and people have questioned this dude's heart, and, you know, toughness, whatever. And you can, you're allowed to do that. But here's what you're not allowed to do. This colonist, he he, he, is, he named his son after his dead brother. Right? And invoked not only his son, but his dead brother in this article. And basically was like, it's, it's rough sauce. It's rough sauce what he was insinuating. And I, I, I don't want to get into the whole thing of, but but Embiid ended up pushing him in the shoulder, from what I understand, in the locker room. And some people were like, yeah, dude, you can't do that. You can't? 
you can't look, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a dude who promotes violence or if you know me, I, I'm a dude just straight up walk away guy. Unless, but you can talk shit about my son or my dead brother. That's a fuck around and find out moment. I may not, but you may have caught me in a moment where I'm like, yeah, dude, I might go ahead and punch you in the face for that. I, I just might. Guys, we, because of social media, we've got, yo, I did this. I did uh, my friend Heather McDonald's podcast. And I never read comments when I go on other people's podcasts because you're dealing with other people's fans and some people are assholes. But Heather had mentioned that there's just like, there's a lot of nice comments. So I started to read a bunch of stuff. And then one comment was just a douchey thing to say. And I thought to myself, man, I wouldn't mind just punching that person in the face. Social media has gotten us so used to saying horrible things about other people without consequence. That never used to be the situation. If you wanted to say something horrible to somebody and they were going to hear it, you used to have to say it. If it wasn't to their face, it was behind their back, but you at least knew the person. You didn't get to do it from 3,000 miles away. Do you know what I mean? We've gotten so used to be able to say terrible shit about each other. It's such a toxic fucking cesspool. It's not good for anybody, guys. If I don't like a movie, I don't leave a comment on the Instagram. I might say something here. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't leave like, I fucking hate you, terrible, your job. You're... But you know where to find me. You know who I am. This is not this is not anonymous. It's such a terrible, toxic thing. We have become so angry. And I know this sounds like you're talking about punch people in the face. Yeah, because there has to be consequences. You can't just run around spitting vile the people. It becomes second nature, and then we become deaf to it. We become immune to all this shit because it's all that's being said. My Instagram feed right now is cats and dogs and weird animals who like each other, like a fox and a duck. I like that shit. And I'll tell you something else, man. And this has happened. I've had some clarity, and I'm saying sober because I haven't had any weed or anything since Jacob went into uh, rehab. So my mind is pretty clear in a way that I was not expecting. And I've decided a lot of things. I've, I've, first of all, I like it. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I like it. I'm not saying I'll never smoke weed again. And I'm definitely not saying I'll never take mushrooms again. I bet I'm more inclined to take mushrooms than I am to smoke weed because mushrooms did not cloud my brain the way weed did, apparently. But I'm going to use it the way I think I want to use it from now on. No judgment on how anyone smokes their weed. I don't, I had a lot of fun for, 30 years, you know, no judgment, but I think I'm going to use it the way I had always had started using it, you know, and it's a celebratory or hey, we're going to go see a movie or a concert or, you know what I mean? But not like a, hey, it's eight o'clock. So that means it's time for me to, sp and I guys, I never was a dude to smoke weed during the day. I know a lot of people think of me as this crazy stoner. I was never a wake and bake guy. I was not a daytime smoke dude. And on show nights, not until like usually late show, but it's really, <clears throat> I'm dreaming for the first time in a long time, which is bananas. I feel feelings in a way that I haven't in a long time, which I think has been good, especially considering, you know, what's going on with Jago. And I, I've really started to put an emphasis, hopefully on what's important to me and who's important to me and on what a friend is I think I've redefined friendship. I think I've found that I know a lot of people and I like a lot of people, but I don't have a lot of friends. A lot of things came clear when Jakey went into sober living. It was pretty public. And they, there was a definite line of people who reached out and didn't reach out. But I don't blame them. I go back to, are we friends? Or are we some people that we just know each other? And I like you and I know I wish you well. And it's no disrespect. I took a ton of people out of my phone. And I'm going to go through Instagram and there's just a bunch of people that I don't need to be following. And no disrespect to them. It's more out of respect to the people that I do call my friends. I'm not going to 
bunch those people together anymore. Because they're not the same. And there are people that are in old chapters in my life that it, it's, it really is, there is some gray area there. But I'm really figuring out what's important, who's important. I can't believe I'm doing it at fucking 55. Uh, I think I've always known. I just think I've been scared to make the distinction. But it needs to be made. And like I said, it's not out of disrespect. It's more out of respect to the people that are there. And always have been, you know. And uh, this is so weird for me to say, but I'm way I'm, I'm so disenchanted with my business, not comedy, not stand up itself. I me, mean, I guess you could call it entertainment. I know a lot of people are have this Hollywood, whatever. It's entertainment. What it brings out of people and me included. So I, I'm eyes wide open. Eyes wide open for sure. It's eyes wide open with the nuts to follow through. Fine. That's it. I think I've always had eyes wide open. I've just been scared. And and this is, listen, I'm going to make some decisions that aren't going to be good for my career, that but they're going to be good for my heart. I'm going to make some decisions that aren't going to be good for my bank account, but they're going to be good for my life. I honestly am more excited about what I'm going to create in the next year without the weed and without the outside noise than I think I've ever been. I'm clear and I'm happy. I'm also happy, by the way, that we picked a winner for the contest. We did pick a winner for two tickets and two plane tickets to any show in the country. Picked in all the people who um, sent in your um, giddy up dance. I will be sending out. I'm sorry, they were supposed to go out. That was on me, but I've been sick for two weeks. They were supposed to go out at the beginning of the illness, and uh, that's what we're going to call it right now, the illness. Um, and, uh, but those are, those will be coming out. So apologies. And thank you for sticking with me on that. I want a quick little shout out for the tour dates. Thank you to everybody who listens to this podcast, by the way. Thank you so much. Everybody watches the podcast. Thank you to everybody who spreads the word about the podcast and thank you everybody who's sticking with it while Jacob's away. He'll be back and, uh, we'll be better than ever. Two sober dudes. That's what we're going to call the podcast. Well, comedian, Joshua.com for tour dates. Um, this weekend I am at Omaha, Nebraska, sixth, uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. I am in Chicago. Uh, the week after that, the fourteenth and fifteenth, I'm in Bakersfield, California, and Sacramento, California. And uh, the week after that, I am in Des Moines, Iowa, taking the week off for Thanksgiving to hang with family, and uh, back on the road in December. In December dates. Uh, I include Houston, New Year's Eve in Seattle, uh, a, the, a theater tour of the East Coast, like Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, like that. And guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Um, fourstoriescomedy.com if you want to go check out the special or sp- spread the news. And as usual, guys, a big thanks to Best Day Brewing. Um, if you're looking for the best non-alcoholic beer that you're going to drink. It is best day brew. I'm telling you right now, guys, as a, as a dude who, has, who hasn't drank in a long time, but do does miss the taste of beer and misses the cracking open of a beer. This satisfies both men. It's the perfect, perfect drink for somebody who misses both of those things. I promise you. I've sometimes I felt a little left out, you know, when people are out at barbecue or upstairs in the house or having dinner or just watching a game. And I'm like, everybody's drinking. Crack open breath day. For me, IPA, they have so many great tastes and flavors. The guy, Jim, who runs the company again, guys, I'm at, you're supporting basically somebody who's going up against the big guys. 
He hasn't sold Dan Iser Bush. He's not sold selling all these people. He's keeping the quality good, basically. He's not selling out. This brand is growing like crazy. Get on board. Best day brew, everybody. But so many more fun things coming up. I have uh, Matt and I are going to be doing some very fun things on the street streets of Las Vegas. That sounds dirty, but it isn't. And um, I got a lot of fun stuff planned. I'm going to be dropping another special in May. I would drop it in March. I could drop it in January, but that seems like a little too close. I don't think I'm going to go on a bunch of podcasts to promote four stories. If I'm being honest with you, I'm going to do a couple in, in Los Angeles. But one of the things that I'm doing is I'm going to stop spreading myself so thin. If anything, these last two weeks taught me is I just, I do need to pull back a little bit. I'm 55, man, you know? And so I want the body to be willing and able to do what the brain wants it to do. I, and I know, I already know what my travel January through May is. So we're going to cancel a bunch of the podcasts and um, I'm hoping that just word of mouth on the special will continue to uh, make the numbers go up. By the way, congratulations to the Doyers. No, can I just say why this was my two most hated teams? So I wasn't really rooting for one more than I was rooting against another one. Like, I was just rooting against the Yankees. And to have them lose in the way that they lost was so much better than having them get swept. Because, and people are going to be like, first of all, I can hear the Yankee fans now. You book 27 rings. Stop it with the 27 rings, guys. It, dinosaurs used to walk the earth, too. It's so long ago. It's so... That, that's your argument, 27... I'm a Celtics fan. You know what? I never bring up the championships. You know why? Because most of them happened when there was only two black dudes in the league. Do, they, do those count? And who the fuck cares? I wasn't a lot. You can't be invoking... It, dude, if... It, <laughs> if the Wright brothers had a great-grandson, right? And he was a murderer. Yeah, but my great-grandparents, who gives a fuck what happened now? And I'll tell you what happened now. Is the best way. Hope. They were back in Yankee Stadium, and they were... There was hope? We, we, we just were out to win two games in a row? And the Yankee fans... <sighs> and then guess what happened? Whoop! The rug right out from under you. And you know what's happening to younger Yankee fans? I'm going to tell you what's happening. Because it's been so long since they won. And they lose in such spectacular fashion now. You know what's happening? Is they're getting the mentality of losers. Do you know what? Somebody, we were, we were laughing at some salty Yankee fans in the hotel lobby. And because last week I, I thought I was better. And this is the mistakes I'm not going to make anymore. Flew into LA for a day. Uh, turns out it wasn't. When there were some salty Yankee fans, this is when I saw Jacob. There were some salty Yankee fans in the hotel lobby. One of the young guys was like, you yeah, the Yankees are like the Niners. They can't win the big one. Now, someone from my generation, the, the Niners and the Yankees, that's all they did was win. But they see you as losers, Yankee fans. Like, you can't win the big one. You know how happy that makes the majority of the country, it was like, oh, I honestly could have jerked off in the lot. That is amazing. I had in my wildest dreams. That's not, and then so game five, they're getting all this hope. Yeah, hope. Yeah. Rug. Zeke, you know, the best part of this is not just the somebody celebrating in Yankee Stadium says the Yankees. But cutting to the shots of the Yankee fans Gah, in the stands, Gah. so much fun. That's how petty I am, everybody. That is how petty. I'm not claiming not to be petty. Uh, the, the arrogance of the Yankee fan is like, you know, it's like, it's, it, it's like cowboy fans who enter every football season like they won last year. What the fuck? It's the it's so 
amazing. But I will say, and I and, and listen, I, I, the Red Sox fans were guilty of this too. But to light a city on fire in celebration of a team win is the dumbest fucking thing. It, it, and by the way, the the people who loot, I mean, it's dumb and smart, I guess, because they're like, nobody's going to arrest us. We're just going to go to the store. Everybody's lighting shit on fire. But it's the dumbest. That's how you're celebrating. And I heard somebody say, you know, the police just have a, have to have a better plan for this. No, you fuck. Just don't light buses on fire when your team wins. That's the plan. What? Don't. Don't break into the Nike factory because your team wins. You stupid fuck. It's not the cops. They should be out, you know, because there's a parade of some kind. Impromptu parade. No. You lit buses on fire and spray painted shit. You stupid. It's the dumbest. And if I looked up the list of like cities, you know, who rioted. I'm so embarrassed to see Boston was on there three times. You fucking. It's the dumbest. Can we stop, please? Can we stop? One more, one more thing I want to I want to address. I was watching a clip from Tom Papa interviewing Jerry Seinfeld. And um, Seinfeld was saying he wanted to take back that he thought that the far left had ruined comedy. And basically what he said was, you know, generationally the goalposts get moved you things change and you as an entertainer or somebody in the public eye you just have to go with the goalposts right and i kind of agree with that because look guys nobody's like we should be able to say colored people or we should never be able to say negroes nobody's saying that and that was something you know my grandmother said that my grandmother because my oldest brother is only Really, one of my old brothers only ever dated black girls. And she said once, is, is, is he bringing the color girl? We were like, you can't. You can't say that. And she said, why not? Because, guys, the goalpost hit me. So anyways, point being, he says, you know, I made a mistake. The left didn't. Things get moved. And whether you agree with them or not, the job of the entertainer is to fit in there. I kind of agree with that. But whether I agree with it or not, and I do to an extent I do, whether I agree with it or not, there was a litany of comments calling him a pussy, the far left is one, don't go woke, Jerry. Guys, somehow we've come to a point where saying you're sorry or admitting you've made a mistake or that you've changed your idea on something makes you weak that is the stupidest fucking thing i have ever heard changing your mind sometimes you get new information sometimes you grow up yo if you're the same person you were 10 years ago if you have the same exact views across the board as you did 10 years ago i feel sorry for you Nothing has happened in your life that's made you change who you are. You haven't had any new experiences. I'm not saying you have to change fundamentally who you are, but some people do, man. You've seen those people like in the hate groups and KKK or whatever who change their minds. Nobody's calling them a pussy. You fucking asshole. You went woke. They had experiences that made them different people. Sometimes you say things that you regret saying. That doesn't make you a pussy. It makes you a human being. What makes you weak is not being able to make mis admit mistakes. That's what makes you weak. That makes you a fucking problem. That makes you a pussy. You're so insecure that you can't admit, nah, you know what? I got some new information. I don't think that anymore. Yo, dude, and this is... Nobody's telling Trump he's a flip-flopper because he's he was a Democrat. That doesn't mean he flip-flopped. That means he changed his mind. People change their minds. Do you know what I mean? I, I find the way people interact with each other now 
so problematic. People have asked me a thousand times why I don't say what I think about politics or who I'm voting for because it doesn't invoke conversation. It is now just emotion. If I come out and go, dude, I'm actually pro Harris, I'm gonna you would get a gazillion fuck you, Trump, Libtard. If I was like, I'm actually, you know, I've decided to vote Trump, racist, Nazi, right? I'm oh I'm way more apt to talk about social issues, I think. Um, but like the reason I don't get into it is because it it's not gonna make a difference. It's gonna draw more lines. And I would rather be somebody who tries to figure out how to make a difference. I have some neighbors who were pretty friendly with each other until one put up a Trump sign on the lawn and one put up a Harris sign. And I was like, what happened? They just don't like each other now. They said they liked each other before. They used to walk their dogs together. They just never talked about politics. To me, guys, it's what brings down societies is they just have us arguing with each other and they're all so fucking narcissistic that they don't care how we treat each other they just want to win and um yeah man it's a weird time weird time weird time i do want just want to say one last thing to jason kelsey because i know he's he watches and listens Dude, I wish you would just punch that dude, that bro, right in the fucking grill. I'm sure there were, the, but the problem, and and uh, my friend Michelle Beadle said this, the problem with that is when you start punching people, trolls, they have got nothing to lose, you got everything to lose. But you, you wonder why people become reclusive or are assholes in public. I mean, I'm lucky, dude. I'm not, I'm very lucky. I'm not a, a huge star or, or a huge comic and I and people are very respectful with me generally very respectful but a lot of these people man I don't know how they do it I don't know and I know like a lot of people like why aren't they cool you should be cooler because they try being cool most people I know who are cool in public tried being cool and it didn't end up well Yo, it's just like I used to when I was smoking weed. I used to smoke weed with fans until that became a bad idea. What I would say to everybody is try to show each other grace, man. Either way is going to, unfortunately, I think, not be pretty. So try to show each other grace. And Matt, let's, let's, let's get into some weird notes. Oh, from The Guardian, one of my favorites. A common condition, growth the size of a melon, a scrotum swelling disease threatening thousands. What? Threatening thousands? Efforts to eradicate the painful and disfiguring mosquito-borne infection, lymphatic filariasis, are advancing, but is still rife in 51 countries. Wait, do they have to bite you on the nuts, or they bite you and it goes to the nuts for decades? Medical team jammed about three liters of fluid from the swelling. Is that a picture? Is that going to be a picture, Matt? Uh, they're not showing the actual scrotum, uh, okay. but uh, um, they are showing the guy who suffered from it. Which I believe okay. it's this gentleman. Here, let's move. Uh, let's. For decades, a growth the size of a large melon made Raimondo O'Kear's life miserable. Yeah, no shit. Because it wasn't the actual testicle, it was a growth on the testicle, which is like. Third testicle, which seems terrible. It was okay. it was actually um, around the testicle, so it, it's the the scrotum is the area that gets affected by this. Oh, everyone would look and laugh at me. I felt inferior. Or, I mean, if you want to put a positive spin on it, Raimondo, superior, biggest nutsack in the world. The mass had grown large enough that he developed back pain. And found it hard to wear trousers and to have sexual relations with his wife. Well, I understand that. I mean, listen, as a dude, an older dude with longer nuts, it can be a problem. But I've never had watermelon nuts, which seems like a real issue. 
Yeah. How would you, you know what? When I was a younger guy, I got hit in the nuts with an axe handle and um, in a dumb fight. And um, I had to choose between tidy whities and boxers for a good long while. And it was a tough choice, man, because the tidy whities stopped the wiggle, but it squeezed them a little too tight. And the boxers let him move a little bit, but walking, you know, sometimes there was a bump or two in the road that really fucked things up. So, Raymundo, I understand what you're saying. But how long did that other people, including his two brothers, his two brothers had it too? Whoa. <laughs> Medical team drained three liters of fluid from the swelling around the scrotum. What do you do with all that extra skin, Raymundo? Because now you got some extra skin around that sack. Transmitted the bites, infected. Whoa. Infection usually happens in childhood. And then it swells when you're older? 36 million people have this chronic disease? Dude, I know my new charity. Are you kidding? Ray, Ray what are we going to call this charity? Raymundo's Nutsack? Since Okafer has had the operation, life has improved. No shit. Back pain. Because that's what women get with huge boobs. This dude's nuts were so big. His sack was so big. He had back pain. Golly. I'm donating to this charity. I can have sex very, very well. well. All right. Take it easy, dude. Take it easy. I mean, you can just say you can have sex. You know what he will... We, who is going to judge if you can have sex very, very well? When I go in the village into church, people used to laugh at me or quiet. I point at them and ask, can you see my hydrocell? I don't know if that's a term for scrotum. This is how much fluid was drained from his scrotum. Well, that is insane. Holy moly. Do you get to keep that? I mean, I would. You wouldn't keep it and show people when they came over? Hey, you want to see something fun? That came out of my nutsack. People would be like, what? I would 100% see if I could keep that. Do they let you keep that? I would ask. Raymundo, first of all, I'm happy to donate to the this nutsack charity. I think we should find out. This seems like something that I can really get behind. That is terrible, dude. Wow. 36 million people. Well, how about that, Raimundo? I'm glad you can beg your back to having sex very, very well and wearing regular sized pants. I'm sure he was wearing like MC Hammer pants for like, you know what I mean? Oh, 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 he was wearing those for sure Hammer pants. <laughs> I, I, that's the only, that, the only way a nutsack, nutsack with that much liquid in it is fitting in pants is if they're Hammer pants. Please hammer. Don't hurt him. What else we got? Japanese man arrested after calling his wife over 100 times a day in bizarre act of love. 38-year-old man in Japan was recently arrested for harassing his wife by making over 100 anonymous phone calls a day. He justified his actions, claiming he was simply expressing his love by repeatedly calling her without speaking. But are you expressing your love if she doesn't know it's you who's calling? I guess would be my first question, right? Why anonymous? And when she went home and told you, which I'm sure she did, hey, some fucking creep is calling me a hundred times a day. Why, if you were expressing love to her, why wouldn't you just go, that's me, my love. I'm, this is me expressing love. Suspicion arose when she realized that her phone remained quiet while her husband played video games. That made her suspicious. So it it rang nonstop. Were they together all the time? This is this makes no sense to me. The, first of all, how long is your husband playing video games? This dude seems bananas. So when he's with her, he's not paying attention to her, and then when he's not with her, he's calling her from a anonymous line. This dude has serial killer written all over him. I'm so sorry. I mean, is this a movie? This feels like a Japanese horror movie, or at least a game show. 
was the first case of phone stalking between spouses in the same household. Yeah, no shit. The man was promptly arrested for stalking and harassment. Okay, hold on. So he would call her from the house, but only when he wasn't playing video games? No, so he would call her while he was at work and she was at home uh, constantly and not say anything. And then when he was home and playing video games, she noticed that the calls stopped. What what does he do for work where he feels where he could call a hundred times a day? You know what I mean? And I, there had to be something else because maybe the anonymous, well, maybe not because it must have been the call stopped entirely when he was home, not just when he was playing video games because or maybe he was playing video games on his phone and she noticed uh, that the call stopped. That's right. This is bananas. I bet you when he called her a lot, when they were starting a date, she thought it was sweet. She was probably like, I like how much you call me. And he was like, wait till we get married. <laughs> 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 While the concept of married couples living apart due to work isn't uncommon in Japan, cases like this one is how jealousy can manifest that doesn't make any sense. What was he jealous about? Himself? Was he jealous of himself calling her a hundred times? Was that his alter ego? Yeah, that this one made no sense to me. This dude for sure should be in jail, not just for stalking, but for taking a future murderer off the street. Wow. All right. Matt, what else? I'm obsessed with whale poop. Dude, you, you hooked me on this. <laughs> you, you hooked me. I, I'm accept, this is the title for those of you listening. I'm obsessed with whale poop. It can be neon green, bright red, or even sparkle. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen a baby ship before, but the color of poop that comes out of a baby, when you change a baby's diaper, you're like, well, I know you didn't need anything that color green. And you've never eaten anything blue, so I'm not sure where that color comes from. And you know what I mean? It, But whale poop, sparkly, it may be colorful, but if it gets on your clothes, you have to throw them away. Who's rubbing whale shit on their clothes? That You know what? That's like when you say things like that, it, it's the it's like I, I saw a warning on a bike. That somebody said to me, don't put your penis in the chain. Uh, yeah. Don't, eat, don't put your penis in a bike in general. Not just the chain, the spokes, the seat, tire, handlebars, horn, bell, basket. Keep your dick out of bikes. Don't don't rub whale shit on yourself. Probably didn't need to be said. There were gallons of poop. Oh, this is this person who first encountered whale poop 30 years ago. Gallons of poop in the water. Yeah, I imagine that whales are multi-ton. I'm a at this point, but I'm generally like a 165 pound dude. And I, I know how much I shit. Um, I am not, if you scope that out to tons, it doesn't surprise me that there were gallons of poop in the water. That seems maybe, maybe small. It looked like red floating bricks. The smell was overwhelming. Yeah, dude, listen, do you have any real large friends that when they fart, you're like, God damn, what the fuck? How did that happen? Because I've farted my whole life and I've never smelled anything like that before. But a whale, you know, how things ferment. So sometimes it takes a while to get through. The whale, it's going to take a little extra while. Yeah, dude, of course it was overwhelming. And there's so much of the poop. Wait, Matt. Matt, I will save this to the end. But I think this might be a first. Because, you know, we talked about nuts, but you know what we didn't talk about? Yes, I do. And you're not going to get me to do it today, buddy. 
yeah, I'm fucking 47 minutes in, not one mention of you know what. It looked like red furling floating bricks, sure. The smell was overwhelming, of course. Some whale poop smells like brine and seawater. But with whales, right whales, there's a strong smell of sulfur. Why are you... Why are you smelling each individual poop? It, yeah, if you get poop on your clothes, you have to throw them away. You're never going to wash it out. I, I have to tell you something in general. That's a rule from, of mine in general right now as an adult. I generally, if there's shit on it, I'm like, I'll get another one. I'll just get another one. You know, I might wash some shoes, but I've thrown away shoes. Because I'm like, well, I'm not going to put those into the washing machine. I don't want the shit in there. And these, I'm just going to throw them away. And by, by the way, just me. And I know people are like, poop comes out. Okay. But then I have to know that this is the shirt that had poop on it. Yeah, not worth it to me. That guy has a cup of poop in his hand. Well, fecal plumes can be neon green or bright red. At times, they sparkle with silver scales. Like the sun glinting on the water. Every whale defecation is unique. First of all, don't write about this in such a flowery way. But yeah, dude, why does that surprise you? Mine are unique too. Sometimes, you know, they're pretty strong, straight out of the water. Floaty, sinkers. You know, it just depends. On, maybe he got extra plankton one day. Yeah, of course it's different because he's not, he's not on a keto diet, motherfucker. He's not eating the same thing every day. He's a whale. He swims around. Sometimes he, you know, this this dude, like he's in, I could have told you all this. I hope you're not a whale poop specialist. You and the dude from Japan should get together. Have him call you a hundred times a day. As for the smell, the, uh, oh my God. Is this the dude? As for the smell, the poop of right whales is the strongest. Can you go back? And foulest, but I love the smell now. Can you go? Is this the dude? This is the dude who loves the smell of whale poop. And he collects whale poop, apparently. Get, he has traveled the world collecting samples. I, now, if this is for like science, I get it. I don't know enough about science or... And or whale poops. Well, he he's a marine biologist, wow. and so he he's been studying whale poop as part of the ocean's ecosystem. Okay, I'm with it. Yeah. I don't know why you thought the smell of it. I guess you collect it. I hope you don't keep it. All right, buddy. I think we've done the news for today. And thank you to all of you who left comments on YouTube about the Tony Hinchcliffe thing. Most of them were well thought out. Thoughts, not you fuckhead, not you whatever. There was, hey, this is what I think. And I replied, hey, this is what I think. But this is how we have conversations. And thank you guys so much. Let's continue the conversation. Love you. We'll see you next week. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.